Hey there, I'm Andrew. I'm a vacation training student at Optinum Solutions. This is the first video in a series of four about real-time simulation in education, in which my colleague and I will introduce basic concepts surrounding real-time simulation. The context for real-time simulation is model-based design, which is a development process for embedded systems, such as the example shown on the screen. Instead of relying on physical testing of the embedded system, model-based design is centered around a virtual system model that tries to account for all components of the physical system. By virtually modeling the system before physical testing, we can predict its behavior, which allows us to test and explore different plant and controller scenarios, and it provides us with greater insight into the system dynamics. There are challenges associated with running virtual simulations. Firstly, virtual simulation can run faster or slower than what it would in reality. However, the actual hardware that the system is composed out of must act in real time. This means that engineers run the risk of developing an embedded controller whose physical hardware is too slow to respond to changes in system dynamics. Another issue is that virtual simulations cannot account for all system dynamics. Sometimes, physical system dynamics change over time, and the physical system can also behave unexpectedly due to things like sensor noise. This means that physical prototyping is necessary. After testing the prototype, the controller is refined, simulated, and prototyped again. Building prototypes is expensive and time-consuming, so we want to avoid it as much as possible. The solution to these challenges presented by physical prototyping and testing is real-time simulation. Real-time simulation simply means that the simulation proceeds at the same rate as it would in reality. This is made possible by a target machine that is dedicated to real-time simulation of the plant or controller. In this video series, we will be using a SpeedGo target machine. I'll explain how this works and why it's beneficial. One application of real-time simulation is rapid control prototyping. This happens after you have bought the physical plant and want to test your controller designed to see if it works in the real world. But you don't want to build controller prototypes. The idea is that you can run a real-time simulation of the controller on the target machine that takes the place of the physical controller. This mitigates the need to build a prototype controller after each controller design iteration. Another application of real-time simulation is hardware in the loop testing. This happens when you already built your controller and want to test it with a physical plant. This is sometimes not possible. Maybe the testing is too dangerous, complex, or expensive. The idea behind hardware in the loop testing is that you test your physical controller with a virtual simulation of the plant on the target machine. In this way, you don't need the physical plant to test the controller. Real-time simulation is a powerful tool for use in academia for the following reasons. HEAL allows researchers to perform tests where funding and equipment is not available. Real-time simulation has education value in the classroom, especially when teaching courses that involve control systems. A lecturer can modify controllers in real time, and students will immediately see what effect it has on the plant. Lastly, real-time simulation is used extensively in industry, and as such, it's a valuable skill for students to learn before graduating. This concludes the introduction to real-time simulation. We will be discussing rapid control prototyping and hardware in the loop testing in detail in the next two videos. Thank you for watching.